So we're starting with a pretty simple genetics problem here. We see that Jack is heterozygous for eye color. Heterozygous means that we have two different alleles for eye color here. The directions ask us to use big B for brown eyes and little b for blue eyes. We know that he's heterozygous. Again, he has one of each. So genotype, his genotype, which is what the genes actually look like, would be one big B and one little b. We, we call big B little b. Um, that's heterozygous. Phenotype is what Jack looks like, what he looks like from the street, uh, what anybody walking up to him would see. Um, because we have one of the dominant alleles, he would have the dominant phenotype, which in this case is brown. We always show uh, the capital letter as the dominant phenotype. If Jack marries a woman who is also heterozygous, so now we have two heterozygous individuals. So their cross would look something like that. What are the chances they will have a homozygous recessive child? Well, anytime we're trying to find percentages, we want to set up a Punnett square. We're going to distribute out our um, different alleles, like so. And then we do our crosses. So here we would have a big B from the top and a big B from the side. You have a big B from the side and a little B from the top. Generally, we're always going to list the um, dominant allele first. So there we have a big B, little b, and down here is the only place that we're going to see a big B, sorry, a little b, little b. Since that is the homozygous recessive genotype, we see that we're only going to see that one in four times. One out of the one, two, three, four uh, possibilities that are here. An example of a physical trait that may be influenced by the environment would be somebody's size, perhaps their height, um, which is going to be affected by their diet, by how much they eat, whether they're eating their, uh, taking their vitamins, whether they're eating healthily or um, something like that. This example, this is um, an incomplete dominance. This is a special kind of a situation, um, which we see in this picture right here. Um, a red flower is crossed with a white flower, and they have a possibility of making a um, individuals that are kind of mixed halfway in between, or in this case, a pink flower. Um, this only happens in certain kinds of organisms with certain kinds of traits. It doesn't happen all over the place. Uh, but we know um, that the red flower over here is going to have a homozygous dominant genotype. And the white plant is also going to have a homozygous dominant, but it would be different letters. So we use R for red and W for white. Then the pink must have one of each, so it would generally have a big R and a big W. And we use two capital letters to show that this is incomplete dominance. Which plants are homozygous for the flower color? Well, both the RR and the WW would be homozygous, whereas the RW uh, would be the only heterozygous. The pink flower is heterozygous in this example. The last example that we have here is an example of codominance. And in these pictures, you see a set of um, white horses that are being crossed with a set of brown horses. And rather than getting a tan horse, like you, may, you might have gotten in that previous example, you get a horse that is black, or sorry, brown and white spotted. Um, both of the alleles contribute to the um, phenotype or what this organism looks like. So we um, describe that as being co-dominant.